Good morning, SCA. Pastor Jordy here. Hope you had a great weekend. Happy Monday to you. Just uh, three announcements, and then we have a very special guest today that I'm, I'm thrilled to have a conversation with for you. So grads, the uh, SCA scholarship application is now live, and Mrs. Matheson is uh, telling me you need to check out the link on the grad Brightspace. So applications are due April 4th at 9 a.m. sharp. That's for scholarships. Uh, there's a little bit of work involved in applying, so you probably need to start that early. If you have any questions, of course, you go speak to Ms. Mrs. Matheson. Junior high badminton tryouts are beginning this week, and they're going almost every day, I think every day, after school, 3.30 to 5. Uh, grade 9, you guys are going Monday and Wednesday after school. And grade 7 and 8, you are going Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday. Any questions, of course, ask Mr. Botchway. Okay. Pie Day is today. Happy Pie Day to you. Come and throw a pie at a staff member for $2 to $5. And money raised is going to go to help the people in Ukraine. So I'm excited about that. St. Patrick's Day is coming this week as well. What a week. March 17th. So that's Thursday. Uh, you're encouraged to wear green. And Lucky Charms are going to be served at lunch, I think that is. Maybe in the morning. Anyways, St. Patrick's Day is going to be fun. Hey, I want to introduce you, uh, a friend of mine, I've known her for a few years, Mrs. Kucher. Nice to have you. Hi, Welcome. thank you for having me. Yeah, good to have you. Hey, so we've rehearsed this a little bit, but um, I reached out to you knowing that uh, you have uh, some very direct Ukrainian roots. Um, so we're going to get into that. And I'm really, really, this is a, a difficult conversation, um, but I'm so grateful that you are willing to uh, let our SCA family know that that isn't just what's going on in Europe. It actually touches us right here in our school. So uh, tell us a little bit about your family without outing your daughter too much. <laughs> um, well, I was born in um, Ukraine. Um, I came here when I was 21 years old, actually, to study in Bible college, where it was so exciting because uh, when I grew up, I never even heard that Bible college existing somewhere in a world. Um, we met here with my husband, and um, now we have a nice family, four children, um, two boys and two girls, Dennis, Jacob, and Lita. They graduated uh, from SCA, and Alina is still going to grade 10. Um, and I'm so thankful for SCA. Actually, it's just amazing to know that my kids can study. And I'm so proud of all the staff and the school. Uh, cannot say enough. Thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, tell us uh, you ha about your family uh, here. So thanks for that. Uh, you have family, uh, close family uh, in Ukraine. Can you tell us a little about your family in Europe? Yes, um, we do. Uh, my um, sister-in-law, my husband's um, sister, she is in Ukraine and her family. They also have four children. Um, close to children of our age. So it's very close and they are um, living in Kiev. Um, when the war started, they had to flee, leave everything behind and they took um, some families with them to go to the Western part where we grew up because it, it was a little bit more quieter. Um, unfortunately, today, this morning, we heard the news that they, um, ex two bombs exploded right there in where my husband was born. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you, you are having, it's sounding like you're having regular communication with your family still. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. From the day one, it was, it was hard to actually realize. I think we're still in denial and disbelief in a shock. Um, the first day my husband didn't go to work and we tried to pray and connect with everybody that we knew uh, back there. Mm -hmm. yeah. How, how, like, it's just so hard for us to even relate to, I mean, that's happening to your family. You said bombs this morning, like that, I mean, how more direct and recent uh, can you be? Uh, can you say any more of, 
of of kind of how are they doing, really? It's hard for them, special. It's hard in every level of humanity, actually, uh, spiritually, in a soul level, physically. It's devastating um, to know that you don't have a shelter anymore. You don't have the water. You don't have electricity. Um, uh, my friend that we constantly still, my best friend from the school, actually from the high school, is still there. And they have seven children, big family. And um, they decided to go to the city of Kharkiv uh, to bring humanitarian and food, just food for the people. Because mm. um, as we know, it's in a um, huge, huge damage from the bombing. And yes, we did pray over the phone and because her husband actually and uh, her sons went to deliver that humanitarian help and food. So I was so relieved yesterday to know that they are back safely. Mm -hmm. And um, my sister-in-law and her husband directly, they started to help for the refugees that are leaving everything behind on eastern part of Ukraine. And um, just with the backpacks on their shoulders, that's the way they receive them. So the church um, in Rivna, where I am from, and my husband from Lutsk, um, they developed shelter. The church is now, it's a shelter for the refugees who are coming. Um, and they just sleep there. If they are able to have a shower, that's great. If not, that's, I guess, the way the war going. Mm. Um, and uh, Mariupol, the city that I was just uh, listening about, that's a city dear to me because that's where we would go every summer for vacation. It's on a Black Sea, beautiful. Um, as far as I remember, that's my memories of the childhood. Always enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And now it's hard to listen that the electrical wires are on the ground and um, people died, dead people on the ground they not having all means to pick them up and bury them. So it, it's hard. It's almost like a horror movie that I never into. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's unreal, but it is real. Yeah, well said. Can you, can you just, uh, you know, our time is done already, um, but I hope we can do this again. This is, uh, I really appreciate this. Can you help us? We're over here. And we kind of still live our life and, uh, you know, but biblically, uh, we are to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. You know, back in the day, actually, uh, in biblical uh, times of funerals and weddings were actually a community event. Everyone was welcome. Like they did highs and did lows together. How can we... Uh, uh, not just pray, we'll do that in a moment, but maybe tell us further than just me praying for you in a second. How can we pray and how can we, is it, can we just donate, just give, uh, talk to us about what can we do over here? The biggest, I still believe in a power of prayer. So please, please pray for the peace of Ukraine. Um, in the midst of that going through the fire, going through the devastation. I believe that through our prayers, God can provide that super powerful peace about in the midst of the fire going around. So please pray for that. And also for the refugees, for the pastors' families, that they would be strong. And even physically, it's 24-7 job to take care of the people, not just giving shelter or food, but they come with the extreme post-traumatic shock from the bombing exploding around them. Mm. Uh, so it's hard to pray for that as well. And uh, for donation, of course, the money probably is the huge help um, because they need even the fuel to transport uh, those refugees from the eastern part to the western part. They are willing to go and do it, but they do need fuel. And as we know, it's extremely high right now. Mm -hmm. um, so for the nation, probably donate that and um, that MCCA 
at gmail.com and those all money will go directly to Ukraine. And that that money is that's connected to your local church here that is sending it to the folks in the Ukraine. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. Because we do have a, a big Ukrainian community church here. That's exciting. So SCA, uh, if you would like to give uh, and you need that address, you can certainly ask me and uh, I'll get that to you. Uh, if uh, there's other ways to give as well, and uh, I, we just encourage you to, to do something. And uh, we're going to close our time today. Uh, Mrs. Kucher, I again, appreciate you. Uh, we are praying for you and uh, we will stay in touch. So uh, let's close in prayer. And uh, teachers, uh, maybe maybe can I ask when, when we just finish praying now, if you in your classroom would just take uh, either a moment of silence and allow people to just be quiet and in prayer themselves, or uh, maybe you could just lead your class in prayer for uh, our people. So uh, thanks, let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, uh, we pause at this time and we recognize, Father, that you are uh, all present and you are here and you are in the Ukraine at the same time. And I thank you for that miracle and that reality. And I do pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you would uh, do a special work there. And thanks for what you're already doing and leading your people to be a light in a very practical way. Uh, in that community, in those many communities. And uh, they need your strength uh, and they need resources and they need uh, our people here and the rest of the world to come alongside as it's been happening. So we uh, thank you for the Kuchers here. Pray you'd bless them and their family as they uh, reach out to their family in the Ukraine. You just do a mighty work. And I pray for peace, Lord Jesus. So anyways, thanks, Lord, for um, thanks for being a good God. And we just desperately need you to work in our world. Uh, so in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm a softy, so I just hang on a second. So thanks for hanging out with us at uh, uh, SCA. Just take a second, be silent and pray. And I hope you have a great week. Peace. Thank you for having me. Good to have you too.